Now, now, Lindsay, we appreciate you breaking this and really going into it in full detail here today. You have traveled out of the country to meet with the even higher level, you know, even bigger oil company, absolute CEO, former head, uh, who, who's giving you this information and almost everything he said has come true. But out of the gates before you give us the new briefing, you said in October, six months to a year, 150 or higher. Uh, are they going to be able to carry this out because they weren't able to overthrow Saudi Arabia or what's happening? Here, the Mr. X of my book, The Energy Non Crisis, who is still alive, has been asking me to go to a briefing outside the United States of America. Well, I finally picked up my family and we all went. Many of you have been wondering why you have not heard me on any radio show for probably a month. Now, some of the things that I saw and heard in this briefing, I cannot say on your show, uh, Alex, because if I did, you would probably have the same thing happen to you that one famous man who was on Fox News had happened to him. They relieved him of his job. Fortunately, you're on Genesis Network, so you won't get kicked off. When I came back to the United States of America, I literally wanted to kneel down and kiss the ground. Believe me. Uh, I've never been so glad to be back. And by the way, all of you out there in the listening audience, I did not go outside the United States of America in order to find out if it was some other place I wanted to move to. I am here to be with you to see this entire thing battled out from the beginning to the end. And Alex, I'd like to invite you sometimes to go with me on one of these briefings. You come back, I promise you, uh, a, a different man. Now, the Mr. X of my book, you, you know who he is. Uh, not Mr. Fromm, you know, he passed away about six, seven months ago. But the Mr. X of my book is over 70 years of age. And it's almost as if he has become like Mr. Fromm to the point that, let me just go ahead and tell him everything. I don't care. If you think you can get by with it, do it. So as a result, you... Uh, please, folks, have a pencil and paper handy today because I'm going to give you some facts and figures and statistics and names and dates that have never been given because up until Monday of this week, I didn't even know it myself. When I got back in the country, uh, my Mr. X and I spent a lengthy period of time on the telephone last Friday and then again on Monday of this week, basically going over all of the things that uh, I could say without getting in trouble. Now, Alex, the first thing I want to do today is congratulate you. <clears throat> I don't think you realize just how much you and a number of other radio talk show hosts in the country have, uh, have upset the elite. Uh, you have succeeded, and here's the first thing you've succeeded in doing. Because of what you and others like you have done, the elite have decided, and here's the first, and this is not a prediction, this is an outright statement. You can take this, I'm not going to say take it to the bank, because don't take anything to the bank, but you can believe this one and enjoy it. There are a few things that are encouraging about what I heard and saw. First of all, because of the American people waking up too rapidly, that the elite are scared to death. Many of you remember that I have said numbers of times on the Alex Jones show that when I lived with the elite of the world for three years, one of the first things I found out was that there's only one thing on the face of the earth they're afraid of. They are scared to death of the masses of people waking up. And stay there. Stay there, death. Lindsay. The key information. Glad you're breaking it here. Uh, we're going to come back uh, after break. And uh, we're going to get into uh, to the fact that the elite are scared of the awakening. That's the same thing Tucker sources and other sources confirmed out of Bilderberg. Lindsey Williams is our guest, and what he's saying uh, really uh, integrates in with what Jim Tucker has said. Jim Tucker from his Bilderberg sources has been able to say, Berlin Wall will fall next year. It's going to be staged. Margaret Thatcher will be out within two months. She didn't go along with this. George W. Bush is going to endorse in the next three months global warming. People laughed at that. He has predicted because these people steer the planet. They don't totally control it, but they're able to influence it. They're trying to set up a total world government so they do run it. But they certainly run this nation, and they're running it into the ground. But the fact that Germany's pulled out of the invasion, Italy's now pulling out of this new world war they're trying to start... That's exactly what we got from Tucker, is that they are scared to death, they are upset, they know that Europe isn't going to go along uh, with more bailouts. Uh, Lindsay, you, you traveled to meet with this high-level globalist, 
uh, and he said, look, I'm just going to give it all to you. Briefly, why did he, I mean, did you ask him why? And then B, you've got new information. I told you during the break, I know Fox News ran back off because he was going too far. Um, and uh, so now, you know, he's just going to internet like we do, you know, with the full scoop, I guess, we hope. We'll see what happens. Uh, but I, I don't care. Whatever you were told, lay it out here, buddy. Hit them with both barrels. Go ahead. Congratulations, Alex. You have succeeded. You can call yourself a success. Too many Americans are waking up and revolting against the elite system. And as a result, here is the first way in which they've backed off. Gasoline will not go above $5 a gallon. They had planned to take it to 6 to 7 before the summer was over with. I said that on your show back about two months ago. They now have said to me on the phone on Monday morning, this Mr. X in my book, Energy and Crisis, he said, Chaplin, it's going to go to no more than $5 in any place across America on through the rest of the So summer. you didn't learn that when you traveled to meet with him. This is a new development. No, 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 the number of things that we talked about on the telephone uh, after I got back here, and this just happened to be one that he said, yeah, go ahead and say all this you want to, because he said people will enjoy $5 a gallon gasoline. Now, many of you remember whenever I said about two and a half years ago it was $147 a barrel to $50 a barrel, and within three months it took place exactly as they told me it would. Well, you can count on this also. They have had to back off slightly because too many of you were waking up and they were fearful that uh, th that the American people were going to revolt. So they, and the first thing they've limited is $5 a gallon gasoline for the rest of this summer. Secondly, my dreams, Alec, have finally come true. Now this one I want you to go and prove for yourself. Some of it you can get, some of it you cannot. Hope you have pencils and paper. In my book, The Energy Non-Crisis, there is a chapter entitled, If Gull Island Doesn't Blow Your Mind, this will. And oh, by the way, all of you out there, if you want a copy of Energy Non-Crisis and To Seduce the Nation, I don't sell them, but if you want the copies of those books, you can go to Amazon Kindle and get both of them for less than $9 each. So please, I hope you'll read that chapter, If Gull Island Doesn't Blow Your Mind, This Will. For 35 years, I have been hoping and, 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 and wishing that what I said in that chapter would come to pass, because very few people were willing to believe that I actually saw what I saw that day. You ready? Here it is. If that pencil and paper is ready, uh, you, you want to write this down. The largest oil rig ever built on the face of the earth within the past few weeks has been moved to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. Write it down. You're going to hear this talked about. You think the Gulf of Mexico was big? You think the strike that they hit in the Gulf of Mexico was something phenomenal? You haven't seen anything yet. I was in that room that day 35 years ago. I saw the largest oil pool on the face of the earth discovered and ordered classified within 24 hours' time. They are finally about to open it up. And when I tell you in a moment why they're going to open this up, you are going to be startled. Okay, I'll give you the name of it and the place and what they're going to do so that you can prove it for yourself and know I'm right. They call it the Liberty Rig, L-I-B-E-R-T-Y. Biggest oil rig ever built on the face of the earth, and it is placed right near West Dock on the Arctic Ocean, approximately two miles from what I call Gull Island in my book, The Energy Non Crisis. And they are going to drill, listen to this, I mean, I, I still am dumbfounded at what I heard. They are going to drill eight miles. Did you hear this? Now, this was told me just the, uh, just the other day. They're going to drill eight miles with this biggest rig ever built on the face of the earth into, they've named it, by the way. I call it Gull Island in my book because that's all they called it back in those days. They're calling it today the Lisbon Zone, not Lisbon Field, Lisbon Zone. Be sure and quote it correctly. And they're going to drill eight miles out and hit what I call Gull Island in my book. All right, stay and there. We, stay there. Uh, we'll break down what Mr. X told you. This is good news that Lindsay's saying that uh, the establishment is afraid uh, they were testing it and, and thought they'd get away with it. But because... Uh, the fact that people are getting so upset that they may not uh, go all the way up to $150 a barrel. That's very similar to what Tucker told us from Bilderberg 
But his source inside Bilderberg, sources, said that, 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 that they are upset about the awakening, but that they still want to go up. Uh, but that they haven't been able to completely overthrow all these Middle Eastern countries yet. Now, 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 Lindsay's saying that after this long period of consolidation and higher gas prices and the depression, then they will develop fields all over North America because they had a deal with the Arabs to not have big fields develop as long as the Arabs invested in the U.S. dollar, in the T-bills. And, and, and now that deal is ending. The Saudi Arabians and others are leaving the dollar. The Chinese are leaving it. All of this is happening. A major global geopolitical, economic, military realignment's happening. And that's why there's U.S. ships off Syria and Marines training for amphibious assaults of Libya. That's why all these new drone attacks are starting and Pakistan's being menaced and troops in Afghanistan are being prepared to be moved into other areas because the, there's a standoff going on here. Now, 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 Lindsay, you were getting into this big oil rig and why they're planning to open up these fields that they've kept shut since the late 70s that you, in 1980, exposed in your book. Uh, but, but, but specifically, I mean, why are they planning this? And then what's all the other big news that you traveled out of the country to get? The price of $5 per gallon of the gas pump is only temporary. I, I did not mean to say that this is something that's going to stay this way. The other reports you're getting are correct. They are going to take it to $150 to $200 a barrel. But temporarily, because of people like you, Alex, waking up so many Americans, they are going to keep the price at $5 a gallon until they feel the American people have calmed down enough they can take it further now. The next statement that I'm going to make, uh, it will probably affect your life more. And you've never heard this before. It, it will affect your life more than any other one thing uh, that you will hear me say, ever. Here goes. The elite are getting ready for the day that the revolution in the Middle East cuts off oil supply. They have a target date. I cannot give it to you. Uh, it, it's not too long off. They have a target date when the Middle East will be in such revolution. It started in Egypt. You remember, I announced this on the Alex Jones Show. Alex, it's in your archives. I came on your show, and I said within four to five months' time, there's going to be a crisis in the Middle East. And you said, Lindsay, is it going to be with Iran? And I went back to my Mr. X, and I said, is it Iran? And he said, no. He said, this is a crisis of another sort. And four months later, it started exactly as the elite had told me. Egypt first, Libya, Yemen, mark my words, it's going to go right on into Jordan, Syria, the final country will be Saudi Arabia. Their plans have not changed in any matter. They know the approximate date that they're going to be able to do. But that's what, what Tucker to said two weeks ago. You said this in October. Tucker's sources said that they do plan on bringing the entire Middle East down, and they're going to blame the oil prices on that and, and, and then blame the depression on that. But, but uh, what you're saying about them gauging going to 150, you know, first it's two bucks, they go to three, you get mad, they go back to 250. Then they go to four, then they go back to three. Then they go to five, they go back to three and a half. They go up to four, they go back to 350. They go up to five, they go back to four. They're always training us two steps forward, one step back, to where now we think 350's cheap. See how we've been conditioned. So that's what they're saying, is they're gonna try to move a little bit slower? They backed off to $5 temporarily because of people like you, Alex, because people are waking up too fast and the elite are getting scared of the public waking up. Okay, put this date down. I know we've got a few more minutes here only, and i got to cover as much as I can. I've got another major briefing I want to give you here. Put this date down. May the 12th, 2011, there was a bill that went before the House of Representatives on that date. It was very quietly done. It never hit the national media. More than likely, you never heard about it. And this bill that went through the House of Representatives on that date, May the 12th, 2011, there was a vote of 243 to 179. And what were they voting on? They were voting on something that will startle you. They were voting to, well, first of all, they, they wanted to reverse President Obama's Offshore Moratorium Act. Obama has given them some problems, by the way. I can't go into that now for lack of time. They take a whole program. Uh, let's go back. They reversed his opinion, and they said, watch it. 
Oh, please, you've got to note this. I've been waiting 35 years for this. I'm so excited, I don't know what to do. They have given permission for drilling where Gull Island, in my book, Energy Non-Crisis, uh, wrote about 35 years ago. They are opening up the Bristol Bay area of Alaska. They are opening up the Arctic Wildlife Refuge. I do not know whether this has been through the Senate or not. I can't find out. Nobody will tell me. I can't look it up anywhere. It did pass the House of Representatives. Now, why are they doing this? They're doing it because they know the approximate date that the Middle East, all of the royal family, every one of them, even the, even the royal family of Saudi Arabia is going to, going to be deposed. Mark my words. Oh, I'll give you another one, too. Just in passing quickly, and I can't elaborate on this right now, we are going to default on the national debt of the United States of America. I'm not talking about raising the debt limit, which you're hearing so much about. We are going to default on the national debt of 14 to $15 trillion. That's just in passing. They know the approximate time already. Okay, well, please give us, if you have it, uh, what the plan is, what the time frame is in the Middle East, and will they raise the debt limit, and then after default, or or uh, what are they looking at doing right now? I do not know whether they're going to raise the debt limit or not. It really doesn't matter with them because there's going to be a default on the national debt regardless. Now, they have a, a general idea of how much longer it's going to take them to depose every royal family and throw down every ruler in every country. So far, they've gotten Egypt, Libya, Yemen. They're going on from here to Jordan, Syria, and Saudi Arabia. Oman and, uh, and uh, the other countries will fall in this same time frame. And whenever they do, they must produce the Ameri have the American oil field ready to produce by that time is the reason they push through. Oh, they, they pay it off. I mean, literally, they paid congressmen off to vote on this thing on May the 12th, 2011, uh, and passed this bill through the House of Representatives. They've got to have permission to drill in these places to get the oil ready so that at the time the Middle East oil supply is cut off, the dollar is devastated, the national debt can't be paid any longer, and they've got to have a savior. They will step in and say, okay, we have found these monstrous new oil finds. There's only one problem. My book, The Energy Non-Crisis, told about it 35 years ago, and they've got a problem with that. You can read it for yourself if you'll get a copy of it from Amazon Kindle. And these things will be opened up at approximately the same time so that they can supply the oil for the United States of America. And they'll come in and say, oh, we will think and produce it for 60 cents a barrel, and they're going to sell it to you for, you know what they're going to sell it to you for, 150 to $200 a barrel. Now, the Bakken Oil Reserve in North and South Dakota and Montana, if I wanted to make money these days, I would immediately get an oil rig if I was a young man and go up there and make a fortune. They are punching holes everywhere. It is light, sweet, crude. They must have it ready for the time that the Middle East, it, it falls completely. The last one to fall is Saudi Arabia. When you see Saudi Arabia fall, folks, you, you better put on your, your listening ears because there's going to be major events take place from that point on. The Bakken Reserve, the reserve under Denver, Colorado, the North Slope of Alaska, they must have all of these ready, Alex, by the time that the Middle East falls. I understand that. Now, uh, Lindsay, what else? I mean, you travel out of the country to meet with this guy in, in, in person, and then you've also talked to him in the last week on the phone. Uh, what else did he tell you? Because we see them setting up the Pentagon takeover of the Internet. That's mainstream news today. Uh, we see the Pentagon uh, admitting they're going to test cyber attacks on other infrastructures. That's the cover. Uh, we see more and more censorship, FBI shutting down mainline websites for no reason. We see uh, the uh, big gold exchange announcing that the way they interpret a new law, that uh, over-the-counter gold sales can't be done now. Uh, we just see a TSA on the streets. I mean, you can see the massive buildup, huge Marine Corps amphibious drills. Uh, our intelligence from Fort Hood and other bases, it's on late September, early October. Ground invasion of Libya, they're taking him out one way or the other. I mean, did your source say why they're going after Gaddafi? I mean, why do they need to get rid of people that were already working with them? Well, I know the answer. They're double-crossing them. They're going to uh, develop oil fields here now that they'd made a deal 30 years ago that's now on record uh, to not develop if they would invest the T-bills. They're double-crossing the Arabs, so they got, I guess, have to put in new puppets who will go along with that double-crossing? 
No, they want to cut off the oil from the Middle East altogether. I mean, it, it's not a matter of overthrowing rulers. They don't care about Mubarak. They don't care about... Qaddafi. So they're just wrecking everything and bombing the oil fields, as they're doing in Libya, to just wreck it. Yes, they're producing war intentionally. And here's the part that's so startling, Alex. I, oh, my goodness. The, the elite... Please, bear with me here, folks. You know, you know I'm an American. You know I'm staying here. The elite are laughing at the Americans. They think we are stupid. I mean, if this this is so startling, I can I hardly believe what I heard. The elite have been planning for years what they're doing right now in the Middle East. This did not happen just overnight. It just so happens that I knew about it six months ahead of time. But they've been planning it for years. The elite created the crisis. Now, of course, uh, here, here's what I found. The elite are laughing at Americans because we are so stupid that we are allowing this to continue. Okay, listen to the article right here. And here it is. Obama, our president, rejected the opinion of Jay Johnson, the Pentagon General Counsel, and rejected the opinion of Carolyn Press, the acting head of the Justice Department uh, Legal Counsel. And the New York Times just reported on this the other day. Johnson and Press told the White House they believed that the U.S. military activity of NATO uh, led air war over Libya amounted to hostilities, and this president, he has given them some problem folks. Understand it. I, I'm only repeating some of the things I've heard. They said uh, the, the War Powers Act of 19 and uh, War Powers Resolution of 1973, he has risked his future in politics by balking these people. And they, he has to. He has no choice. The elite have told him he's got to do this. He must continue to use. Folks, this is what's so startling. The, he must continue to use the American taxpayer's dollar to overthrow every one of these countries in the Middle East. And you are paying, Americans. You are paying for your own destruction. And letting this stupid president get by with it, I, I'm sorry, I can't... Well, it's more than that. I mean, that's why they've got, you know, the CNN host, um, Fareed Zachariah, Zakara, coming out and saying the Constitution's bad, let's get rid of it. That article, uh, headline, Fareed uh, Zarkaya, am I pronouncing that right? I'm having a um, uh, mental issue today. I ran into him when I was at CNN in New York a few months ago. Uh saying dump the Constitution, Obama didn't just not go to Congress and, and break the law and engage in treason, as his own lawyers have now told him. He said, I'm doing this to legitimize the UN, to show that they're the boss. So this is all about just rubbing our faces in it, setting the precedent to have this tyrant running around starting all these new wars, killing all these innocent people, uh, lying about Gaddafi. I'm not saying he's a good guy, but the point is that it's been proven it's lies. Rape gangs with the Viagra and just like throwing babies out of incubators, uh, like they said that uh, Saddam's people did in Kuwait, that's an admitted fraud. So, so all of this is happening. But, Lindsay, going over your list of other things he told us, uh, because we've gone over some of those other issues a couple times now, uh, specifically... Uh, they want to cut off the oil, further break the economy, then they'll come in with the oil supplies they've had for decades and start developing those. Uh, what else did he tell you? Uh, because a lot of good things are happening. Germany's pulled out of NATO. Italy's now pulling out. French news agencies reporting. Uh, we've got Congress moving to, to try to block uh, a escalation of the war. Gaddafi's holding on something that they didn't really think would happen. They're going to have to have a ground invasion. They're trying to tell us this isn't a war. Uh, even the Washington Post said yesterday no one's buying Obama's bizarre statements that this isn't a war. Many of you have viewed my latest DVD presentation. There were three DVDs that I did entitled The Middle East, The Rest of the Story. Everything that I said in that DVD has been confirmed through the sources that I was just with. Every bit of it is true. Folks, for the sake of your dinner table, I plead with you. My sixth DVD set of everything the elite have told me for the past two and a half years, if you have never seen them, you, it, it's a must for the sake of you sparing your household. And as a result, uh, every bit of this was confirmed uh, through these conversations I've had here in just the last few days, that you, the American people, are literally paying. You are paying for your own destruction. Obama, our president, 
has been told by the elite what they what he must do. He has even risked his uh, his next election because if this thing goes any further, he's in real trouble. But he has no choice because they've demanded him to do it, and the American people are paying to depose every one of this Middle East country now. Must quickly, because I know we're giving out. I've got to go down to gold and silver. Oh, my goodness, what I was told on this is amazing. Don't pay any attention to the price of what gold and silver has done recently. Gold and silver prices will remain where they are through about August. And beginning in September, are you ready? Oh, folks, please. It's, it, Mr. Fromm said to me years ago, he said, Chaplin, if it's written on a piece of paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. Okay, what did they tell you gold prices are going to do? The gold and silver prices from September through December are going to rise between 20 and 25 percent. They're going to back the new world currency with it when the American dollar falls. They have a new term now they're using. They're calling it the petrodollar. They don't anymore refer to, this gentleman didn't refer at any point to the American currency being the, the uh the standard currency of the world or the reserve currency of the world they're now calling it petrol dollars and they said to me i'm gonna give you a sign here's a sign that was given stay in there we'll get it after the break and we'll try to jam in some of your phone calls as well i was talking to Lindsay. he said he's gone through most of the new uh information uh and, and again it does back up uh what uh we got basically from jim tucker but uh why uh, i i mean uh, you said that they, because there's one more person I know that you know, but you're saying that it was a briefing and that you were with them. I mean, was it more than just this oil, former oil company head? Or, or uh, and, and again, why are they telling you this? Well, first of all, they're telling me this because uh, of courtesy, for the fact that I gave three years of my life to be their chaplain years ago. I don't think they've ever gotten over this. Many of these people have never come in contact with a person like that that actually lived with them. And I think much of it is out of courtesy. Then, of course, there's the fact that the elite do have a moral code. And in their moral code, they must tell the world what they're going to do before they do it. Now, I know some things get out of the Bilderbergers meeting, such as you've already gotten, but the other things that didn't get out of that Bilderbergers meeting, and they know that I'm on shows like yours and many other shows, coast to coast, and all the rest of them across the country. And they know that I'm going to give this information out. And this gentleman told me in two briefings, one on last Friday, another one on Monday of this week, what I could and could not say today. And so I'm giving everything that I possibly can in order to help you save your dinner table in light of the fact that the Middle East crisis is going to escalate. You will see more and more of the oil fields cut off. You're going to see an increase in the price of that oil later on this year, but they've backed off for the time being in order to keep you quiet, like a frog bawling in a pot, and try to keep some people like Alex Jones quiet, which I'm quite sure that uh, they won't succeed in keeping you quiet on me, Alex, because we've got to give this information out. And there were many, many, many things that uh, were said and the main thing, of course, I think at this point is the fact that our own president is being told by him what to do is risking his own career and bucking two of the leading attorneys in America for the Pentagon and for the Justice Department. And it is taking taxpayers' money and paying for the war in the Middle East so that they can overthrow these royal families and heads of state, take the price of food oil where they want it to go, produce America's own oil fields, and then, then turn around and destroy the American Well, Lindsay, there's no the doubt all of this is happening. The end game is public. You were really one of the first to, from your sources to talk about this last October. And you can see that it's end game by how dangerous all this is for the establishment. I mean, it's bold to finance Al-Qaeda and other uh, Muslim Brotherhood groups to overthrow former allies. And then now it's admitted that the West foments these rebellions, then comes in with military force behind it, saying, oh, we've got to protect you know, humanitarian groups while they bomb apartment buildings, killing families by the score every day. Uh, and here's Obama, the Nobel Prize peacenik. It's a sick joke doing all of this, and it's happening because that is the end game, is to, uh, to just bring turmoil to the Middle East uh, and uh, try to implode the world economy and bring in this depression. You know, when they say prop up Greece, prop up Ireland, those countries don't even owe most that money. It is the central banks that created the derivatives and have now induced them to sign on. And the IMF and World Bank, even some of the founders of the EU admit 
this is all designed to implode countries. Well, Alex, when I got back to the United States of America, I couldn't believe the headlines I was seeing. I've been out of the country for nearly a month. And I saw this, this headline right here. Some of you saw it. Brotherhood Party legal in Egypt for the first time. Do you realize that they're giving to the Muslim Brotherhood every single nation as they fall? Libya, Libya. And then the next one I saw. I, I can't believe the American people are standing for this. Stay there. We'll talk about it. Well, if you don't like Al-Qaeda nowadays, Folks, you know that I'm not somebody that gets up here and gets into Islamophobia and, 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 and hyperventilates all day about the Muslims. I know Al-Qaeda was founded by the CIA. I know it's a group used to destabilize and overthrow more moderate countries. And uh, I know that in Iraq, you know, they, they, they threw out the secular leader and, and, and put things even worse in. And that's on record. And uh, that's the type of enslavement they want for the Middle East, actually. Uh, and you tell the average good old boy this, that, you know, either thinks Al-Qaeda bad, Al-Qaeda good, or America good, America bad. It's no. These are duplicitous, multi-spectrum globalists who fund all the sides and then have a synthesis that, that leads them to their goal. And uh, that made Bilderberg Group a few months ago really upset at their steering committee meeting that Tucker had an insider at. Uh, and the media tried to deny the meeting happened and later it came out that indeed Kissinger had been there and it was a secret trilateral commission meeting. Uh, they even had Yale come out against us and, and some other big, big newspapers. And it turned out Tucker was, and literally they had to you know, change their, their article and say, well, okay, there was a meeting. First, they tried to claim, you know, that Tucker was nuts and there was no meeting. And then it turned out that meeting did happen. Uh, I mean, Tucker doesn't make stuff up. I mean, it, it, he's 100% on target. But looking at this, um, they really are trying to create order out of chaos. But first, they have to create the chaos to get that order. And uh, they really are trying to, uh, talking to your sources, Lindsay, uh, how big, uh, because uh, reportedly from the Bilderberg Group and, and also public statements, they want this to lead even into Russia and China down the road. And that's what uh, Fromm told you and the other source years ago was, after the Middle East, look at China and Russia, China is the big one. It's the big one, and even right now, with the major crisis in the Middle East and the stupidity of the President of the United States of America risking his career because he's told them they have to, it, not, all of that is totally insignificant to one thing that I haven't even talked about today because that wasn't necessarily in the briefing that I got. But Mr. Prom told me years ago, he said, Lindsay, don't pay any attention to what's happening in North South Korea. He said, never mind the Middle East. He said, China is the big one. And, of course, you know what China's done lately. But when I got back here, let me go back into these headlines because it leads into this subject. When I got back to the United States and saw the headlines that Brotherhood, legal party, legal in Egypt for the first time, they are giving to the Muslim Brotherhood every single country. Mark my words. This is a prediction based on what I've heard from them. They will be giving the Muslim Brotherhood every single country when it's taken over. Listen to this. U.S. pushes for immediate transition in Yemen. Why do they want it so quickly? I hope you read that article. They want it because they're ready to give Yemen to the Muslim Brotherhood just as quick as they can totally take it over. Nations pledge $1.3 billion for Libyan rebels. Why? Why in the world are we doing this? When, uh, if anything, Gaddafi was a friend uh, before we went in to destroy him. And now, of course, he may as well leave before we assassinate him. Of course, this was another headline. NATO's Rasmussen urges planning for post Gaddafi Libya. They already have it planned to do all of this. They know exactly what they're going to do. Okay, what is China doing because of all of this? The next headline I saw that startled me so much. China warns U.S. debt default idea is playing with fire. Folks. China knows exactly what's going to happen. They already see the handwriting on the wall. And because of this... China Hold on, Lindsay. Let's briefly finish up with China. Then we'll go to some callers specifically for Lindsay Williams. Then we've got Dr. Paul Craig Roberts coming up, basically on the same subject, looming world war. China has come out and said, hey, you've already technically defaulted on the dollar on your T-bills. You've already devalued it. You're playing with fire. Now they're in the news. AP Today, China warns U.S. to keep out of South China Sea. U.S. warships have gone in the Black Sea. U.S. ships are off the coast of Syria. EU and others are openly calling for war in Syria. Western-backed forces are coming in uh, out of the Kurd areas, attacking the Syrian military. This is a multi-region war being fought through proxies 
And then once the proxies start the war, the establishment says it's humanitarian. We must go in and back them up. Um, this is really how the Soviets in the 1950s and 60s and 70s did it, is they would go in and back rebels to over try to overthrow a government. The Soviets would normally already have the country right next to that, and then they would come in claiming they were saving the rebels in a humanitarian way. And to see the United States acting just like the old Soviet Union really makes me want to throw up. And then lying and saying it's humanitarian and that it's not a war and uh, doing all the other things they're doing. I mean, it, it, it's just, we've got to wake up from this nightmare. So your sources have said, look out, big collision with China. You've been saying that since last October. What did your sources say, uh, Lindsay, anything on that? China has divested 97% of its holdings here as Treasury bills. They already see the handwriting on the wall. They know that the American debt can never be paid off. Even the interest on the debt is not being paid anymore because nations aren't showing up to buy it. And because of that, they realize that the approximately $3 trillion that they hold, now it's not only T-bills, but the other uh, issues of Federal Reserve, they know that they're on the verge of losing all of that. They are beside themselves. And as a result, Mr. Prom told me before he died, and I can see it so plainly now, the name of the game is control, and he said China is the big one. Oh, by the way, Alex, just in passing, if the elite ever get to you too much, and I know I have the problem sometimes, too, with uh, being able to think straight because of things that they say and do and so on, uh, there is a way. Mr. Kissinger lived to be over 90 years of age because he knows some things. Now, what's happening in the world today, folks, uh, I, I don't know how to say it anymore except that everything that the elite have planned, they, are going to, they, they will keep their timeline barring divine intervention. And they have said that the end of 2012 is their timeline for accomplishing certain things. And they have verified to me that they are on target. Because of the fact that gold prices or silver prices set back a little bit does not mean that they've failed. And it doesn't mean that they failed because they're going to keep prices of gasoline for $5 for a short well, period of time. Well, they always drive silver and gold down a little bit, and then it retraces that and goes up even more. Anybody that wants to see it, just search the term 11-year gold graphic. We'll put one on screen. Now, I promise to go to some calls. Let's jam some callers in here. Tom in California, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hey, how you doing, Alex? Good. I did, briefly, I just wanted to uh, say uh, thank you and your amazing crew and... Uh, I can actually vouch for uh, Pastor Williams. I'd left a message on the Prophecy um, website, and he actually called me back. So, I mean, that, that tells you what type of man he is. He's a man no, I know. Lindsey Williams is a great guy. Uh, and, uh, now, 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 Tom, do you have any questions or comments? Well, I just uh, was curious. Is this standard operating procedure that they go into a country, build it up, double-cross the people? I mean, it seems like this is like a bad rerun of Saddam Hussein. You know, no, no, the, the globalists are totally cold-blooded. It, it's absolute calculations. They cheat each other as well. It, 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 that's why they're in control, because they're totally ruthless and are incredibly good liars, and were able to sell to the Western world in the last hundred years, letting them control the issuance of currency and credit. Lindsey Williams. Uh, yes, and uh, they, they know everything they're doing. They, they plan it well in advance. And the end goal, of course, if, when it's all when the dust is settled, uh, they bring everything to bankruptcy. They in turn get it free of charge. And over a period of years, I've tried to, my best to tell people this lately. Over a period of years, they will bring it back out under their control, under the new world order, back to the place where it was when the great America was the great nation. It and was. that's why they want the global system control. backed up with petrodollars, because no matter what currency you have. There's this new global SDR digital, and, and, and to buy oil, you'll have to buy it in the SDR and other derivatives they've created. And the IMF and World Bank put out public papers saying this, calling it global government. I mean, that's what's so frustrating is it's all right there. It's just not on the nightly news.
Yeah, they are going to issue a new world currency. It will be backed by gold and silver. They must take the price of gold $3,000 an ounce before they bring in the new currency. Silver must be $75 to $100 an ounce. Every bit of it they have a timetable for. They're not accomplishing things quite as quick as they wanted to in the Middle East. Now, of course, they're using American dollars to finish off the job. Saudi Arabia will be last. Folks, every bit of it is right there. By the way, uh, Libya is not going well for them. So just like our awakening's hurting them, they're not invincible, though. I mean, I mean, uh, the Italians are, are, are now moving to pull out of the, the, the NATO operation. The Germans already pulled out. I guess it'll just be the U.S., I, I guess, going in then. Well, if the American people will wake up and stop this, uh, this puppet president we've got up there, uh, they could stop him flat on the uh, right now if, if they'd only get Congress to not be paid off any longer. There's no telling what it cost them to pass this bill that just went through Congress the other day. Uh, folks, wake up. For goodness sakes, listen to everything you've been hearing Alex Jones say. He's not out there just saying something for the fun of it. What you hear on Alex Jones' program every day is exactly what the elite are telling me these days. Well, I mean, all that is is common sense and history and research. You have sources, we have sources. This is what's happening, and that's what's so frustrating is this isn't about entertainment. It's not about being a big radio host. It's not about Lindsey Williams being a best-selling author. We're trying to warn people because we have no future if this doesn't get turned around, and that's what's so painful about this. It's what's so frustrating is geopolitically, the bankers control almost every nation on Earth. They're overthrowing the last few they don't by destabilizing and, and curtailing oil supplies the bankers will have the global currency and they'll have the control of the major oil supplies and the whole world will be held hostage by them and 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 now they're going to start their carbon taxing that the big oil companies are promoting you know, I always get emails you work for oil companies you're saying global warming isn't real uh of the top five oil companies they're the ones along with ken lay that Develop the stinking plan with Al Gore. Well, Rick Perry was the chief of staff for Al Gore. They're all on the same team. I'm sick of it. Alex, let me put it this way, if I may, <sighs> and it'll help your listeners out there. I, Lindsey Williams, I never lose any sleep at night or worry about any of the things that are happening in the world. Nothing ever surprises me because the elite have told me everything that they're going to do I have prepared in advance, and folks, you can do the same thing. I will gladly tell you whenever people give me a briefing, as I've just had, on the Alex Jones Show, I'll gladly tell you what they just told me. And if you will do what the elite have done, and, and you know what they're going to do, you have nothing to be worried about, because you can take precautionary measures in accordance with what you know they're going to do. Don't lose sleep over all of this. Well, it, here's the problem, though. If people, if people, do, and I'm gonna hold you for one more segment, Lindsay. We got a guest coming up. I want to go to Paul in Australia, then we'll go to Ja, Rand, Julio, Richard. Paul in Australia, you're on the air with Lindsay Williams. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Thank. You. Uh, thank you very much, Alex, for taking my call. It's a, it's a great honor to be on the uh, the Alex Jones Radio Show, Infowars. Please, you don't have and to be honored. We're honored to have you, sir. Go ahead. Oh, thank you very much. Hi, Lindsay Williams. How you going, mate? Thank you for calling from Australia. Thank you. Yes, uh, I find it ironic because you used to work uh, with the uh, on the oil rigs, didn't you, Lindsay? Yes, I was at Prudhoe Bay for three years. Wow, because uh, wouldn't it be true that the new uh, uh, oil in the future will be water? That will be the new oil commodity uh, in the future. Don't you? Wouldn't you agree with that? Water. Uh, well, I mean, sure. Uh, the, the globalists are buying up water worldwide. They call it uh, blue gold to, to, to try to corner it and then uh, create artificial scarcity. Is that what you're getting at? Yes, that oil will be the new uh, water will be the new oil of the future. Yes, Alex. No, no, water will not be the oil of the future. According to the elite themselves, they're going to be able to accomplish everything they want to do and bring it in that new world order by the petrodollar and by the control of oil. And it'll be a long, long, long time down the line before anything changes from the use well, of oil. Well, here's what I want to say about this. Regardless of whether you like the petrochemical society, civilization, or hate it, I'm not debating that with people. We know they've suppressed a lot of alternative energies. But they talk about, <coughs> through the carbon taxes, how they're trying to shift our society. They're not. 
what they're doing is they are holding us hostage through the oil system and 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 then shutting it off at the same time to basically totally bankrupt us into their hands uh, the ultra rich wage war against independent wealth correct lindsay yes yeah they know exactly what they're doing they they have this planned years and years in advance anything else and from australia they have nothing yeah. to worry about yeah. the, the rich yes. what, what, what? never fear what's happening Yes, one last quick one, Alex and Lindsay, is that, uh, quite simply, that um, uh, this New World Order uh, is that I believe it will be the Catholic Church, I do, that it will be religion put in with the, uh, 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 is it, what, what's the theocracy? A theocracy, because it's going to come through the religious system of this New World Order. Yeah, listen, well, I appreciate your call. It's a group of elitist people, and I don't think we can connect them with any particular religious group or society, except that it changes from generation to generation. Kissinger was one of them. Daddy Bush was one of them. We need to go right down the line with who announced the new world. Yeah, well, they got key people, people in, in, in every major group, and, and then it's a globalist philosophy. Stay there, in Michigan, thanks for holding her on the air. Uh, thanks, Alex. Uh, I just joined... Um, PrisonPlanet.tv recently after watching some of your old uh, videos uh, on the web and said, well, you know, I need to pay my part a little bit. And then, Thanks um, for the support. Couldn't do it without you. Do you have a question for Lindsey Williams? Yes. Uh, I originally was going to talk about the police state or hidden science, but this is interesting about government default here because in the past I thought that, you know, that could really help our country, you know, and screw the global bankers if we said, you know, we're not going to, Use 20% of our government spending uh, for these uh, no, debt no, no. holders. This is the bankers screwing all the governments and private people that invested their pension funds with them. And then, and then, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, that that's what I wanted to clarify because it, you know it would save like the 20% of government spending, but it would screw citizen bondholders and uh, maybe uh, would it help us get rid of the Federal Reserve? It's to the advantage of the elite to bring about a <clears throat> default on the American debt. They have to do it <clears throat> in order to bring in that new world order and also to bring in that new world currency. In the meantime, it's going to hurt masses of people through their pension funds, through all of the uh, stock market, everything else imaginable. But the, the main issue is to bring in the new world order. They have to do this. And, of course, it's going to devastate the United States of America because other countries are going to hate us with a passion. You remember the, uh, the uh, agreement that was made with Kissinger way back in the days of the Carter administration and others when he went abroad and said, we'll buy your oil, we will not produce American oil if you will buy our T-bills and securities. Well, they've been doing this for all of these years because they thought the American dollar was the reserve currency of the world. Now they are realizing that we're just fixing to do them in and cause them to take a loss of everything they've got. But it's all a part of the new world order in order to bring in that system. John, ja, appreciate your call. It, it's... People need to understand the globalists are so wealthy, they own the institutions, they own the issuance of the money, and they, they are engaged in economic and military warfare against everyone. It is a philosophy of a bunch of social Darwinist, anti-liberty uh, elitists who are a bunch of psychopaths, and they're waging scientific war against humanity, and they're playing different blocks of humanity and nations off against each other. And they've studied how humans operate, and 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 they're in control uh, because of their incredible organizational skills, and because the average person judges the world by how they are, and 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 can't believe that there are evil people out there. Uh, let's talk to uh, Rand in New York. You're on the air with Lindsey Williams. Alex, you rock. Lindsey, you're big on predictions. I got a couple I wanted to see what you thought of. Uh, number one, if the TSA manages to make enough people mad in Texas, they do finally pass some legislation where they tell them they can't grope us in the airports. Now, the I'm fans betting, will blow up an airplane, there, there's no doubt. Right, I'm betting that, that Chertoff and his minions will come on, they'll, they'll have some kind of false flag underwear bomber deal, and that's immediately what will happen. They'll scare the hell out of Texans, and it'll be right back to where it was. Number two, this turkey shoot going on in Libya, I, my personal feeling about this is this less to do about oil than it is to show the world what the future of war looks like. 
This is going to be conducted from the air. It's going to be our drones, unmanned drones going in, mopping the situation up until they whip the opposition down, and then we'll go set some tin pot dictator up. They'll do what we want them to do. Wow. The border of Mexico is wide open, and, you know, how much is, how much is it going to take for Hajis to come across wrapped in a bale of marijuana and come up here and start torching places that are suffering from droughts? That's what we need to be watching out for. I hear you. I appreciate your call. Um, Lindsay, this is the future of war. Unmanned helicopters and drones running around slaughtering people with, a, with Obama wearing a peace prize around his neck. I mean, it really is a sick joke. But we're doing it. We're doing it for the elite. They want us to do this. They're using the American taxpayer's dollar and using the American taxpayer as a scapegoat in order to close down the Middle East. Egypt, Libya, Yemen, Jordan, Syria, Oman, last Saudi Arabia, last Saudi Arabia. I hope I'll say this three times, last Saudi Arabia. When you see it hit, the elite have accomplished what they want, and they're allowing the American taxpayer to pay for it. This gripes me to no end. People should be raising up in arms. All right. Well, thank you for giving us the latest information. Folks can find your materials at prophecyclub.com. Lindsey Williams, thank you so much for spending time with us.